equals 1 into the first of equations 51 we obtain V plus N plus E 8 T 2 J L 21 T I O T J N E L B N T M A 2 carat 71 P X N in which the abbreviations K M I equals less than V M G H I I less than P N G D Q T 1 H R W N asterisk 2 equals J less than P carat Q 2 H carat 2 P R H Q 2 D Q 2 J have been used the coordinates Q Z and Q 2 have thus been eliminated from further consideration the functions H 1 A 2 are functions of percent Y 0 and of X Z J Y X Z Z or Hash A, Y2, 0, 2J respectively. These equations may be further simplified by writing ENTV caret 2MXXY caret equals WM, M, XYZ, EH, whence P2T caret LTM3 WMIY equals equals tilde caret 2 caret NXMX1 caret flamma, 1, 2 less than 5 NIOTJL hash caret 5. Where Q2 carat were A, J, Ari T, Ina HH approximately minus 22 meters asterisk registered M3598 TT2 XL2 meters J in this expression the kinetic energy of the A particle is so much greater than the other terms that, to a sufficient approximation, we may take equals K2 equals. 47 FP2 underscore 42 60 equations 58 are then all of the form V2 plus K2 W percent L7 NA equals PMTM pound XYZ BL which is the ordinary equation of wave motion PMTM X percent YZ is the density of the oscillators producing the wave and as it is complex also determines their phase the solution of equation 61 is given by Huygens principle we u equals r dpids where r is the distance from x y z r to x y z since according to 58 pm m is zero unless m i equals n i or m2 equals n2 all the will be zero except in w i percent to the first approximation only one of the two r are too big 16 molecules will be excited. This is in agreement with the classical theory, which says that the probability of two collisions is of second order. The character of the functions and is readily determined qualitatively, by equation 57, 2 URI 7 t 2 fl 7 HPX equals h, h carat x percent 1, y e, z, z t e h the fictitious oscillators producing the wave are thus all located in the region i t about x, y x, z, c f, fig, 16 in, which h n 2 i y i i is appreciably different from 0. They vibrate coherently, their phase being determined essentially 2 meters by the factor e h, in the figure the lines of equal phase are drawn perpendicular to p. They are spaced at distances x0. According to equation 61, the wavelength emitted by the oscillators is also x0, and a simple application of Huygens' principle shows that the wave disturbance will have an appreciable amplitude only in the conical region which is shaded and whose axis is in the direction of p. The cross-section of this region near percent if yi, zx is determined by the cross-section of the molecule, fr. Its angular opening also depends on Tz, being greater when Tx is small, i.e., the uncertainty relation Apx acts tilde h 2 iv is fulfilled. Similar considerations apply to W$ ma, it is different from zero only in a beam originating in T2 and also having the direction P. We now pass to the second approximation. V dollar TMA may also be written W dollar IM to express theory H E degree T. We now pass to the second approximation. V dollar TMA may also be written W dollar IM to express theory H E degree T. An equation 51 reduces to the right hand side of this equation will always be practically zero unless one of the two molecules lies in the beam originating at the other, for W dollar ma is different from zero only in the beam originating in P2 and HNX7 me I only in Rx. Unless these two regions intersect, the first term will be zero, similarly the second term. 
Thus the prob. Ability of simultaneous ionization or excitation of the two atoms will vanish even in the second approximation unless the line joining their centers of gravity is practically parallel to the direction of motion of the A particle. These considerations may be extended to the case of any number of molecules without essential modification. For each additional molecule the approximation must be carried one step farther, but the principles and results will be the same. It has thus been proved that the ionized molecules will lie practically on straight lines, and that the deviations from rectilinearity satisfy the uncertainty relations. In thus including the molecules in the observed system, it has not been necessary to introduce the discontinuously changing probability packet, but if we wish to consider the methods by which the excitation of the molecule can actually be observed, these discontinuous changes now of a probability packet in the configuration space X, Y, Z, QZ, Q2 will again play AR61E. Section 2. Diffraction experiments The diffraction of lighter matter Davis and Germer, Thompson, Rupp, Kikuchi by gratings may be explained most simply by the aid of the classical wave theories. The application of space-time wave theories to these experiments is justified from the point of view of the quantum theory, since the uncertainty relations do not in any way affect the purely geometrical aspects of the waves, but only their amplitude cf. Chap. E. Section I. The quantum theory need only be invoked when discussing the dynamical relations involving the energy and momentum content of the waves. The quantum theory of the waves being thus certainly in agreement with the classical theory insofar as the geometric diffraction pattern is concerned, it seems useless to prove it by detailed calculation. On the other hand, Wayne has given an interesting treatment of diffraction phenomena from the quantum theory of the corpuscular picture. We imagine for simplicity that the corpuscle is reflected from a plane ruled grating, whose constant is d. Let the grating itself be movable. Its translation in the caret direction may be looked upon as a periodic motion, insofar as only the interaction of the incident particles with the grating is considered, for the displacement of the whole grating by an amount d will not change this inter. Action. Thus we may conclude that the motion of the grating in this direction is quantized and that its momentum Pz may assume only the values nhd, as follows at once from the earlier form of the theory, jpdq, nh. Since the total momentum of grating and particle must remain unchanged, the momentum of the particle can be changed only by an amount mhd m an integer furthermore, because of its large mass, the grating cannot take up any appreciable amount of energy, so that x2 plus p b2 equals place plus p2 y equals p2. If 6 is the angle of incidence, 6 f that of reflection, we have cos 0 equals caret, cos d, equals tilde, pp. When sin 0 feet, sin 0 equals mhpd from equation a, 83, for the wavelength of the wave associated with a particle at then, follows the d sin 0 feet, sin 0 equals m, in agreement with the ordinary wave theory. The dual characters of both matter and light gave rise to many difficulties before the physical principles involved were clearly comprehended, and the following paradox was often discussed.
The forces between a part of the grating and the particle certainly diminish very rapidly with the distance between the two. The direction of reflection should therefore be determined only by those parts of the grating which are in the immediate neighborhood of the incident particle, but nonetheless it is found that the most widely separated portions of the grating are the important factors in determining the sharpness of the diffraction maxima. The source of this contradiction is the conclusion of two different experiments, cases I and 2, p. 61. If no experiment is performed which would permit the determination of the position of the particle before its reflection, there is no contradiction with observation if the whole of the grating does act on it. If, on the other hand, an experiment is performed which determines that the particle will strike on a section of length axe of the grating, it must render the knowledge of the particle's momentum essentially uncertain by an amount AP tilde H axe. The direction of its reflection will therefore become correspondingly uncertain. The numerical value of this uncertainty in direction is precisely that which would be calculated from the resolving power of a grating of axe D lines. If axe less than pound D the interference maxima disappear entirely. Not until this case is reached can the path of the particle properly be compared with that expected on the classical particle theory, for not until then can it be determined whether the particle will impinge on a ruling. When sin 0 feet, sin 0 equals mhpd from equation A, 83, for the width. When sin 0 feet, sin 0 equals mhpd from equation A, 83, for the wavelength of the wave associated with a particle at then, follows that d sin 0 feet, sin 0 equals m, in agreement with the ordinary wave theory. The dual characters of both matter and light gave rise to many difficulties before the physical principles involved were clearly comprehended, and the following paradox was often discussed. The forces between a part of the grating and the particle certainly diminish very rapidly with the distance between the two. The direction of reflection should therefore be determined only by those parts of the grating which are in the immediate neighborhood of the incident particle, but nonetheless it is found that the most widely separated portions of the grating are the important factors in determining the sharpness of the diffraction maxima. The source of this contradiction is the confusion of two different experiments, cases I and 2, p. 61. If no experiment is performed which would permit the determination of the position of the particle before its reflection, there is no contradiction with observation if the whole of the grating does act on it. If, on the other hand, an experiment is performed which determines that the particle will strike on a section of length axe of the grating, it must render the knowledge of the particle's momentum essentially uncertain by an amount AP tilde H axe. The direction of its reflection will therefore become correspondingly uncertain. The numerical value of this uncertainty in direction is precisely that which would be calculated from the resolving power of a grating of axe D lines. If axe less than pound D the interference maxima disappear entirely, not until this case is reached can the path of the particle properly be compared with that expected on the classical particle theory, for not until then can it be determined whether the particle will impinge on a ruling or on one of the plain parts of the surface, etc. Section 3
The experiment of Einstein and Rupp one another paradox was thought to be presented by the following experiment. An atom canal ray is made to pass a slit S of width D with the velocity V and emits light while doing so. This light is analyzed by a spectroscope behind S. Since the light can reach the spectroscope only during the time T, D, B, the train of waves to be analyzed has a finite length, and the spectroscope will show it as a line whose width corresponds to a frequency range. On the other hand, the corpuscular theory seems to prohibit such a broadening. The atom emits monochromatic radiation, the energy of each particle of which is Hv, and the diaphragm because of its great mass will not be able to change the energy of the particles. The fallacy lies in neglecting Doppler effect in the diffraction of the light at the slit. Those photons which reach P from the atom are not all emitted perpendicularly 1a. Einstein, Berliner Bericht, p. 334, 1926, a. Rupp, Ibid, p. 341. To the canal ray, the angular aperture of the beam of photons is sin a carat, hd because of the diffraction. The Doppler change of frequency due to this is AP equals sin A versus CV greater than our avenue equals V underscore VCDV tilde DJ in agreement with the previous result. In this experiment the exact validity of the energy law for corpuscles is thus in conformity with the requirements of classical optics. 5.4 HV. Section 4. Emission, absorption, and dispersion of radiation A APP location of the conservation laws. The postulate of the existence of stationary states, combined with the underscore underscore theory of photons, is sufficient to give a qualitative explanation of the interaction of atoms and radiation. This was the first decisive success of the Bohr theory. The most important results of this theory may be briefly summarized here. Let the stationary states of the atom be numbered 1, 2, 3, n, fig, 17 counting from the normal state. An atom in state 3, for example, can spontaneously perform a transition to state 2, and emit a photon of energy Hv22 equals E3, E2. In the Hv, 1. Same way, an atom in state I may absorb a photon of energy HvZl equals Ez tilde E1 and thus be excited to the state 3. It must be emphasized that these statements are to be taken quite literally, and not as having only a symbolic significance, for it is possible e.g., by a stern burlap experiment to determine the stationary state of the atoms both before and after the emission. It therefore follows that the intensity of an emission line is proportional to the number of atoms in the upper of the two states associated with it, while the intensity of an absorption line is proportional to the number of atoms in the lower state. These results, which have certainly been amply confirmed by experiment, are entirely characteristic of the quantum theory and can be deduced from no classical theory, either of the wave or particle representation, since even the existence of discrete energy values can never be explained by the classical theory. An exactly similar situation is met within the case of scattering. If an atom in 
state one is excited by a photon HD it can re-emit the same light quantum without change of state, the mass of the nucleus being assumed infinite, or it can send out the light quantum of energy HVH equals HVE2 X by transition to state 2, SMEQL1 transition, C fig. 18. The intensity of both kinds of scattered light is proportional to the number of atoms in state 1. If an atom in state 2 is irradiated with light of frequency versus it can emit a photon of energy HV, equals HV plus E2, E1 of shorter wavelength by transition to state 1, and again the intensity of this, anti-Stokes 5 feet scattered light is per 4. T onal to the number of atoms in state 2 this has been confirmed by Raman's 1 experiments. The correspondence principle and the method of virtual charges, the postulate of stationary states and the theory of photons, because of their very nature, cannot yield any information.